In October 2010, Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia said, while delivering his opinion announcement in the case of Brown v. EMA, California correctly acknowledges that video games qualify as expression protected by the First Amendment. Like books, plays, and movies, video games communicate ideas. This was the first time that video games, by law, were considered an art form and could not be regulated by the government. This proclamation inspired game developers. No longer were their products the toys of children. They were now artists, and the collective creativity of the video game industry skyrocketed. Games now had a purpose, outside of mindless entertainment, and an opportunity to improve lives. Hello, my name is Michael Hussey, and in this video I want to talk about how the medium of video games has improved people's lives, specifically in the vein of mental health. The games mentioned in this video have been designed, to some extent, to not only entertain, but to help the player. The first game I'd like to show you is Dark Souls. Dark Souls is an unforgiving game. Prepare to Die was a common subtitle in advertisements before its launch in late 2011. Earlier reviewers declared Dark Souls the hardest game in years. When people want to call a game typical, they call it Dark Souls-esque. Needless to say, this game was intimidating. However, the game quickly became popular. Gamers wanted the satisfaction and bragging rights that came with succeeding in the game, even against insurmountable odds. Overcoming the game's terrible and harsh world felt good, really good, and for someone who was battling depression, this game was literally a lifesaver. You see, depression is a disease that cripples your spirit. Symptoms of depression often include apathy, fatigue, and weariness. Some people with depression experience suicidal tendencies because the pain and suffering that they have to deal with every day just becomes too much to handle. In their eyes, the world is dark and unforgiving. They believe that they'll never be able to overcome their illness because of how difficult that it can be. This is where Dark Souls comes in. I'd like to introduce you to Hamish Black, the founder of Writing on Games, a series on YouTube dedicated to showcasing the triumphs and failures of games from a design standpoint. Hamish also has major depression, anxiety, and to a lesser extent, OCD. Here's what he had to say about his experience with Dark Souls. Every element of Dark Souls design resonated with me in a way that at first fell in line with the surface legacy of the game that I mentioned at the start. However, as time went on and I moved from my point of being suicidally depressed to realizing that I wanted to get better and live, I realized that the complexities of choosing whether or not to end my own life were entirely reflected by the duality of almost everything in the game. This was as revelatory an experience to me as the post-suicidal realization of wishing to perpetuate my own existence, and I would argue it played a substantial part in teaching me how to get better and also in reinforcing my newfound ideas regarding life and death. In short, Dark Souls helped convince me that it was alright to keep fighting through what I originally saw as unbeatable, and has led me to a point where I'm making good progress in tackling my illnesses. To a sufferer of depression, devoting his time to learning the ins and outs of Dark Souls kept his mind occupied, and finally succeeding was such an accomplishment that Hamish found the courage to tackle the illness that was eating him from the inside. Now that we've seen the effects of a 50 hour game, I'd like to show you something that can change your world in just a few minutes. Flowey is a cute little game about a cloud and a sailboat. All you have to do is move the boat with your finger to collect coins and dodge obstacles. The more important task in this game, however, is breathing. The player is told to inhale and exhale in rhythm with the cloud, eventually becoming automatic after a few good breaths. This game may not seem like much, but it has a purpose. It was built to help sufferers of anxiety and panic attacks. Anxiety is another crippling mental disease. Some symptoms include sudden and repeated attacks of intense fear, feelings of being out of control during a panic attack, and intense worries about when the next attack will happen. All this worrying and fearfulness becomes quickly taxing, and some anxiety sufferers are too afraid to leave their own bed. This is where Flowey comes in. Here's Simon Fox, design director for Flowey, explaining why it works. Our game acts as an interface between its users and what are called breathing retraining exercises. In the game, the player's control method is their breath. The player holds a button while inhaling and another while exhaling. These controls translate the player's breathing into the game world, allowing them to progress through stages built around the challenge of conforming to a specific breathing pattern. 
Our intention is that by the end of six minutes of play, the symptoms of a panic attack will have been curtailed. The idea here is to, one, make the player normalize their breathing, as a common symptom of a panic attack is hyperventilation, and two, to distract the player from whatever is causing them stress. What's great about Flowey is that you can take it anywhere, and you know you'll have an effective panic relief strategy in your pocket anytime you need it. These types of stress relief games can be easily marketable to children and hopefully could teach the next generation a thing or two about stress and anger management. Lastly, I'd like to talk about virtual reality. VR isn't a game, it's an idea. A new way to experience games and interactive media from an immersive perspective. And you guessed it, it can help treat mental disorders. The most common form of VR therapy is used to help treat PTSD. PTSD, or post-traumatic stress disorder, is a mental disorder that affects those who have been in trauma and cannot cope with what they saw or heard or did. Symptoms might include nightmares, flashbacks, or a general feeling of being alert against your will. At the University of California's Institute for Creative Technologies, students are creating custom-made environments and scenarios for specific patients with PTSD to experience in VR. The problem with mental disorders like PTSD and anxiety is that the patient's brain is naturally programmed to avoid the things that cause them stress, so they'll never be able to overcome it on their own. The simulation allows the patient to experience scenarios that cause them stress from the comforts of a safe and monitored environment. Here's Skip Rizzo, the director of this project. We never know what's going on in the hidden world of imagination. Some people aren't good at visual imagery. So what VR does is allow us to put people in the context in which they were traumatized, and we're able to gradually help them to go in and confront these stimuli while a clinician is right there with them. While this technology is still in development, simulations like this are popping up all over the country and eventually will reach the public. I'd like to see this in every clinic and have it be available as a form of treatment, not just for service members, but I want to see it in the police department. I want to see it with firefighters. I want to see it when somebody's a victim of a, a school shooting or a terrorist attack, that we can have these kinds of simulations that are relevant for their trauma. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you've learned something and now see games from a different perspective. As an incoming interactive media studies major at Miami University, games are my passion. And I want nothing more for the medium to be celebrated and utilized as the art form that it is. This is Michael Hussey, signing off.